Make sure you get a bingo board and a pencil at the front if you don't have one. You've got like 10 seconds. It looks like everyone's well equipped. Great. Is everyone ready to play some? I think we should call it Lingo Bingo. Lingo Bingo. All right. <laughs> so several years ago, uh, I had the pleasure of meeting and getting to work with a bit uh, a fellow on a Simpty event. Uh, the, the, the event is the uh, Bits by the Bay that the Washington DC Simpty section puts on every year. It's a fantastic event in sleepy Chesapeake Beach, Maryland. And uh, it's, it's fantastic. It's probably, I think, one of the strongest Simpty events and, and technical media events around the country. I'd encourage everyone to check it out. And John Footen, and John, where were you at at the time? Uh, time? Cognizant. That's right, he was, it was at Cognizant, and we were doing some presentations and just, uh, I think, hit it off again. John stood out as someone who is very thoughtful about the way he approaches engineering challenges that we all deal with, and I said, John, I'm looking for speakers for DAS. You know, can you do a, a talk, a presentation, you know, which themselves are fascinating when John is doing it. But he said, like a week later, he's like, I've got this idea. And he, he clearly he had been working on it. And it was to do this kind of jingo or you know, acronym bingo. So John is now at uh, Deloitte, a major consultancy that many of you probably know of. And is it fair to say you kind of like run the media tech business at Deloitte? on the tech side. So he's got an army of very smart people under him. He's the, the guru above the smart people. And John, I'll uh, let you say a word, and then you can guide us through this bingo game. And we will have prizes. I think we probably have enough for probably the top four or five to grab a little something. We have some swag, we've got some movies. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get those to the, the winners afterwards. So everyone ready? All right, so this is for real. It's going to be random. So I have no idea how many people are gonna win or how long it's gonna take for people to win. Um, so the way this is gonna work is that I'm going to pick one of these balls here. I've got actual bingo balls. Um, and then I'm going to correlate that with a list of buzzwords. And then, um, then I'm going to ask whoever in the audience has that buzzword to raise their hand. And then I'm gonna call on someone at random and you're going to have a choice. You're going to either explain that word, if you know the explanation, or think you know the explanation, or you can take an alternate question from me. And then at the end, I'll explain the word. And then we'll go through it, we'll see how many we can get through in the time we have available. So, everybody ready? The first word is linear tape file system, LTFS. Who has that? All right, I'm gonna call on you, sir. Can you please explain what LTFS is or take another question? Uh, that's a good question. Sure. <laughs> please name your favorite sitcom from the 60s, 70s, or 80s. Whoa. Uh, Charlie and Angels. <laughs> Dynasty, that's a great sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let me, uh, I just realized I don't have the presentation up. I, oh, did this work? Yeah, all right. So linear tape file system. So what LTFS is, is it is a system, uh, it's, a, it's a file system, just like, uh, you know, FAT or NTFS, for example if you're familiar with those, that works with linear tape. So it's a way of formatting the tape. I'm gonna try, by the way, to explain all these words in relatively non-technical um, terms. It's a way of formatting the tape so that things can be found, all right, on, on a linear tape archival system. All right, next word. Oh, and by the way, I think like in a real bingo game, if you're one away from the four, and notice there's only four because we don't have enough time to do five, if you're one away, you have to stand up. All right, so everybody knows who to be worried about. All right, the next word, simple object access protocol. Who's got that one? All right, you, sir, right here in the front. Would you like to explain that word? 
or take an alternate question. Okay, your least favorite ice cream flavor. Oh, wow. I love strawberry. All right. Okay. So what simple object access protocol is, sorry, was that the one I called? I actually forgot already. Yes, thank you. SOAP is a web, uh, it's a web service style. Um, so there's lots of different ways for systems to communicate with each other over the web. Um, and one of the major ways is web services. And SOAP, which stands for Simple Object Access Protocol originally, although they actually dropped that, uh, that name, is a method for different software systems to communicate with each other over the web. All right, next word is 5G. Who's got 5G? All right, back there, you. I'm sorry, yes, you, yes. Yes, and very specifically, um, I will uh, point out that the major, there are eight components to 5G. Um, that's not what's up there, by the way, it's just a picture. Um, there are eight components to 5G, eight things that the standard must meet. I won't go through all of them, but big ones are that it has to be at least a gigabit per second. Um, and then the second is that it has to have a one millisecond latency. Um, there are other requirements for it, but its main purpose is to have a lot more users, a lot faster and a lot, um, a lot lower latency for like IoT applications and things like that. All right, next word. Nobody's standing yet, right? All right. Next word is media asset management. Who's got that one? You, sir. Can you explain that? I mean, come on, media asset management, everybody knows what that is. Yep, I agree. It's actually not that complicated, but it actually, when you ask someone what a media asset management system, it just becomes this big thing. Um, it's actually just a system for tracking uh, both the, uh, you know, how to get access to the media and then tracking what access is and, and managing that access. And it's media specific, by the way, because there are other types of asset management systems. All right, the next word, big data. Who's got big data? Yes, you, sir. What is big data, or would you like an alternate question? Yes. Okay, what is your favorite type of sporting event? <laughs> all right. Um, all right, so big data is, is one of those buzzwords that is also can be relatively meaningless. But what it really kind of refers to when people are talking about big data is that you're pulling together lots of data sources, way more than your normal simple database, but many databases, many sources of data. So you have a lot of data, and then you can perform analytics on that big data basket of data. Um, so that's what the big data concept refers to. All right, next word. Nobody's standing yet. Next word today is agile software development. Who's got that one? Yes, you, sir. Would you like to explain that or an alternate question? Okay. That's very good, actually. Uh, bravo. Um, that's absolutely right. It's about, it, I think the most important part of it was what you said at the end there, which is that it changes over time. It's not uh, what the opposite of it, if you want to call it the opposite, is waterfall, where you, you start at a certain point, you define all your requirements, you build the thing, you test the thing, and you use the thing. 
In, in Agile, you're going to do that in smaller pieces and change as time goes on. All right. Are you standing? I am. Oh. Somebody might be getting first prize. The hell I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, by the way, I'm not keeping track of this, so it's going to be uh, honesty here. Okay. I-22, which is JPEG 2000. Who's got that? Yes, ma'am. It's a uh, color of, uh, for, for, st for storing yeah. media, yes. And actually, yes, it is a codec, and it's a, and we got another standard, by the way. Is it any two or is that four in a row? Uh, it's, no, it's four in a row or diagonal. Perfect. So four horizontal, four vertical, or diagonal. Perfect. All right. So, oh, another standard. <laughs> oh, we have three standards now. <laughs> um, so JPEG 2000 is uh, a wavelet. So the original JPEG was a discrete cosine transform <laughs> method of, uh, of storing the media. Um, but JPEG 2000 is a wavelet-based compression. So it's a, it was made in the year 2000, so it's a better uh, standard. It's also used in motion media when it's stored frame after frame. It creates you know, a, a good storage media for motion. All right, next word. We could have a winner with this one. You have to yell. Bingo. Uh, bingo? What do we want? Lingo bingo. Lingo bingo if you win. All right. The next one XML. Who's got XML? I want to call on somebody new. Anybody? Yes, ma'am, back there. And actually, that is a very valid use of XML. What XML is, is it's a uh, text file. Um, it's, a, it's a way of representing text in a specific kind of structure. And that structure is extensible. That's the X in XML, extensible markup language. And by extensible, it means that you can add pieces to that data file without a receiving system having to be updated. It can ignore the parts that it doesn't need to look at, and it can um, it can pay attention to things as they, they get added. So that's the extensible part. Nobody else? Nobody else standing? We still only have three standers? All right. Next word. This is going to be it. Somebody's going to win, right? <coughs> DevOps. Who's got DevOps? Nobody's got DevOps? Oh, no, right there. Yes, sir. Oh, the ultimate question. Oh, sorry. I already forgot. Yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> what, would you, what would you say is the best country music song ever? <laughs> All right, well, that's clearly the best answer. Um, All right, what was that one? Sorry, I've lost track. DevOps, oh, DevOps. So DevOps is a style of work, okay? And a lot of things, if you guys aren't into software development, a lot of things are about philosophy and style, all right? So with DevOps, what it means is that the same people or the same team will go all the way from the initial idea, ideation, the idea, making the idea for the software, through the development, through the testing, and through the maintenance and operation of that software. So they do everything. They keep going with it. A lot of, the way I think about it is it's like a small company, right? In a small company, you have people that are, um, that do every job. Well, that's what DevOps is. Things were all divided in different pieces and somebody said, why don't we put them back together again? And that's what DevOps is. You got another standard? Winner or just a standard? Okay, all right. We got four standards now. All right, well, the way this works, I've been, I've been doing some uh, study on the math of this, is that we're going to have a lot of people win, uh, whoops, backwards. Um, we're gonna have a lot of people that are gonna win at the same, at the same time as we go through it, statistically. All right, so. This one for the next one. All right, so this one is, Virtualization. 
No lingo bingo. Anybody got this one? Yes, sir, here in the front. Yes. That's pretty, that's pre yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's different things you can virtual. Oh, we got another stander over here. Oh, more standers, everybody's standing. Um, virtualization is when you take, um, what? Lingo bingo? Oh, folks, we've got our first winner. Bravo, please, please see Nick over here and uh, you'll get your prize. Oh. Lingo bingo. <laughs> um, so uh, virtualization is when you take any um, physical thing, like a machine or an operating system, and you put it into a container, I guess you could say, that runs inside of something else, which is very similar to what you said. All right, we're going for second prize here. How much time? Me a warning. All right, the next word is IAAS, Infrastructure as a Service. Ooh, lots of people got that one. Yes, back there, ma'am. Yes, you. You think the alternative question? Sure. Um, what would you say is the, uh, your favorite city in Europe? Barcelona, I was just there, that's a great city. Um, okay, um, infrastructure as a service is one of the types of ways that uh, you can get services from the cloud. And what it means is, it's kind of the lowest level. Infrastructure means the actual hardware. So you're actually provisioning, when you access the cloud, you're provisioning machines, all right? So you say, I want a machine with this CPU, this memory, these kinds of characteristics. And that's what infrastructure as a service, or storage, you know, whatever, whatever it is you're accessing. That's what IAAS, it's the most common way that the cloud is used today, although that is definitely changing. Um, nobody else has a, a lingo bingo? Huh? You got it? There we go. Second place, congratulations. Call it out when you, when you get your bingo, call it out. And then see Nick for your wonderful prize. All right, next word, I-18, which is hybrid cloud. Who has hybrid cloud? Yes, sir. Sorry, alternate question? What is your favorite uh, color? Yes. Purple. I would have said transparent. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, that was hybrid cloud. So hybrid cloud is a mixture of public and private cloud. So I'm going to explain in advance public and private cloud in order to explain that. So public cloud is an infrastructure in which it's owned by a third party um, and you access uh, somebody else's servers and, and things like that and that many people can use that. Right? So many different companies can access the same infrastructure. Um, that's a, the most common today. It's, a, it's what Amazon Web Services is, for example, or Google Cloud. Those are public clouds. And then private cloud is when your company builds a cloud, a data center with cloud-like characteristics that operates in your own data center. And the hybrid cloud is when you have a mixture of the two clouds. It's actually rather common. And in fact, actually, just a quick note, is there's a new trend in public cloud of putting some of the public cloud infrastructure onto your premise. Uh, Amazon has a service called Outposts where they take a piece of their public cloud and put it onto your, onto your premises. And that is in order to get the least amount of latency um, and fastest access at a reasonable cost, but still getting all the other characteristics of public cloud. All right, no other winners? Next word. All right. Software architecture. 
Our first stander is our third winner. Um, so who, who else got software architecture? Yes, sir. You want to explain software architecture in like a minute or so? Well, just all of it? <laughs> all right, alternate question. If you take 12 and divide it by Four and add one, what do you get? Four. Yes, you're a genius. Yeah, no, no bingos. Um, all right, so, um, so uh, software architecture is again a philosophical thing. Actually, I, 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 I talk a lot about software architecture in my different talks, like the one Nick was talking about. Um, software architecture is this idea that you take things in layers. Um, there are different layers that we, we put things in so that, um, that you, you are operating on an issue at the appropriate level. And so we've created layers of abstraction in the software, and that's what we call software architecture. There's many different approaches to it. I've got a few of them as my buzzwords. There's many different types of architectures, different ways of structuring things. Um, but the main point with software architecture is to do that, to, to pull together that way. All right, next word. N35, representational, representational state transfer. Who's got that? Rest. You got that, but you're not a bingo. Not a bingo. All right. All right, so, sir, I, you're the only one to raise their hand. So do you want to explain rest or an alternate question? <laughs> you, you want the alternate question. All right. Um, how many miles is it from here to Los Angeles? I have no idea. <laughs> somebody, somebody might want to look that up and let us know. I don't know. It's like, I think it's like 3,000 something. But I could be wrong. Um, so REST. REST, remember before I talked about SOAP? So REST is another way of having software systems communicate over the web. In fact, you see REST more than anything else these um, if you look at those, at your web browser and the things that are happening in there, those complicated messages, if you actually try to read them, um, inside of there, there's often a REST call. Um, and REST is a very simple way of having two software systems over the internet connect with each other. The most important thing is that these are between stateless systems, meaning that you don't have to know, stateless means you don't have to know the state of a system in order to ask it something. You just ask your question, you get an answer, and both parties separate, and they don't have to continue to know anything about each other. That's what stateless is. All right? Can you give an example of something that you would use every single day that REST is modeled on? Well, sure. <laughs> sure. Right. How about can you do it? HTTP. Uh, yes, HTTP. HTTP can be used for lots of things, but the HTTP, so inside of the REST protocol, most commonly you will use things like gets and puts. If you look in your web browser, you'll see these words. Those are getting information from another system, putting information into another system. But the most important thing with REST is once you've finished whatever that is, getting, putting, and some other things, then you're done. You, you don't have to continue. The next step, whatever it is, doesn't assume any continued knowledge All right, next one. I guarantee somebody's going to win on this one. B2, which is Advanced Media Workflow Association. Bingo, bingo. Ah, oh, we got a lingo bingo work. Oh, two of them. I hope we get enough prizes. Let us know when we're running out. Then the prize will just be honor and recognition. Um, the Advanced Media Workflow Association. Who got that? Uh, yeah, sure, you. Do you know that organization? Alternate? Alternate question. Um, who was the second president of the United States? Is 
that right? All right, Adams, you win. Um, I should have thought of these questions in advance and looked up some answers. My, uh, my improv skills are lacking. Um, okay, that was Advanced Media Workflow System. So that organization is one of the important standard setting organizations in the industry. It's technically not a standards organization. It's a uh, association, uh, industry association. But in any case, it uh, helps develop what you could colloquially call standards. Um, they do, uh, they originally did, in the ori they were originally the AAF associations, association. So if you know the AAF file format for post-production, they were the creator of that. Then they went into a ton of the MXF standards. So taking the MXF standard, which was developed by Simpy, and then constraining it into smaller pieces, um, they're called application specifications, so AS, like AS11, and AS12, and all those others. They developed those. Then they most recently have done NMOS, which is the network media uh, specification, so it's for connecting IP systems within the industry. Um, and I believe they're looking now at uh, agile media workflows So it's a great organization. I recommend getting involved with it as well. All right. Two more winners. I just got to get another ball out of here. A couple balls, I guess. Oops. All right. Oh, we do. A hiding bingo winner, <laughs> embarrassed to win. All right, one more winner. Hopefully not more than one person will win at the same time. All right, the next word, one of my favorite words of all time, enterprise service bus. Who's oh, our final winner. I literally wrote the book on it. If you look me up, you'll see I wrote a book on enterprise service buses um, in the media world. Um, so who got that word? Yes, of course you did. You won. Uh, so what, uh, what, would you like to try to define it or take an alternate question? Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. Um, so I'm taking it you want an alternate question. All right. I'm going to pick one I know the answer to, or at least I don't need to know the answer to. Um, What, uh, what year was uh, Bill Clinton President Trump? What year? Yeah. It's not that far back. Congratulations. All right. Oh, I already forgot what word we were on after all that. <laughs> enterprise service bus, of course, my favorite word. Why could I, how could I forget it? So an enterprise service bus is a software system that allows um, different applications to communicate in a common place. All right, so it's basically like uh, a post office. Messages come from different software systems. They go to a central location, and then that bus, you think about bus in the, like an electric system sense, that bus then passes the message to wherever it belongs. It kind of routes it to wherever it belongs. Actually, enterprise service buses have many different features, but its main point is that it's a single location for everything. Still, you can yell out lingo bingo, no prizes, but uh, you get, yes, you get your round of applause if you win. All right, next word, MXF. Who's got MXF? Oh, we got bingo. You get the round of applause. Congratulations. So, sir, can you please explain what MXF is? 
Okay. Boy, I gotta come up with some alternate questions. What is your favorite pizza topping? <laughs> Pineapple is not a pizza topping. I don't know who thought of that idea. What is it? Olives. Olives. Wow. Okay. That's pretty fancy stuff. Um, MXF is material exchange format. And it's a file format for video that allows, um, that allows for a file to contain many different elements in it. It was one of, basically it was the first real interoperable professional media standard for moving media files between systems. Before that, we had a lot of proprietary versions. Um, we had a Grass Valley version. We had a, um, a, a where was that company? HP version. Um, we had different versions of these file formats. They created a standard exchange format um, out of Synergy. It was called MXF. All right, next word. For the applause. IOT. Who's got IOT? Yes, sir, over on the side here. Bingo, bingo. Can your refrigerator has the internet? <laughs> your refrigerator has the internet. Lingo, bingo, who was that? Congratulations, sir, you got Lingo, bingo. All right, yes, IOT. IOT is this idea that um, different, you can have every object out there, physical object, connected and instrumented in some way to the internet. So that it can be accessed, it can get you can get parameters from it. Refrigerator is a great example of that. The uh, refrigerator will say what its temperature is. The refrigerator will say whether it needs eggs or whatever it says. But that's what the Internet of Things is. It's taking it beyond people and computers into everyday objects and having them connected to the internet. All right, how many more words do we get? Okay. All right, next word. Next word we got is not I must have made a mistake somewhere. It doesn't matter. Um, three more words. Okay, I'm pulling out three balls. All right. The first of our last three is Optical Disk Archive, ODA. Anybody have that one? Lingo Bingo. Lingo Bingo. Congratulations. You want to explain optical? OK. Uh, what is your favorite snow cone flavor? Coconut. Coconut. I'm personally a tiger's blood man. Um, but anyway. Um, ODA uh, is, a, is a Sony, originally Sony created format, although there are some other partners in that ecosystem now, that basically creates cartridges of optical discs, akin to Blu-ray, I don't think it's exactly the Blu-ray format, um, and will allow for you to, instead of using the tape type systems, like LTO, linear tape optical, um, I mean, uh, thank you, um, instead of using that, uh, using uh, uh, optical disks in, in the system. All right, next to last word. Here's your chance for bingo. We've got, ooh, a great one. Cloud native. Who's got cloud native? Lingo bingo. Congratulations. And since you called lingo bingo, can you please explain cloud native? Oh, wow, okay, it's, cool. Uh, it's a uh, file for exchange of files. I love that you guessed. That is not correct. <laughs> <laughs> but you were brave to guess. I love that. Um, so cloud native is a way of building applications so that they operate within cloud, within a cloud environment natively. Um, what that means is that most of the stuff that's out there on the cloud today is basically operating in the cloud like it was running on a computer. A cloud can be dealt with in a different way. You can, you can separate your storage from your, um, your, 
computing. In fact, there's another term I will throw out there that's not on my list up here, which is really important and very popular right now called serverless. Um, serverless computing is when you don't even care what's in the cloud. <laughs> it's like the ultimate uh, version of the cloud where you just run your app and you get a bill. You don't ask for anything, you don't ask for any servers, you don't ask for any storage, you don't ask for anything. They just send you a bill for what you actually use. Um, you don't think about that in advance and that's, that's serverless computing. So cloud native is an application that is built to, uh, to, to handle the scaling options that are available in the cloud. All right. Our final word of the day before I head back to Los Angeles <laughs> is microservices architecture. Anybody got that? Yes. <laughs> All right. What is your favorite pasta? Linguini. With what topping or whatever sauce? Alfredo. Linguini Alfredo. That's a really good one, actually. All right, so um, microservices. This is a great ending word because it's another one of those great recent buzzwords you're probably hearing all the time. Microservices is a, in fact, let me, let me, I stopped calling up my pictures. Let me call up the picture for microservices so you can understand what it is. <laughs> Whatever you want it to be. <laughs> Uh, microservices is an architecture that is very similar to service-oriented architecture. So what a service is, is this idea that there's a, a piece, a component of software that does a specific job, a very small job, and just does that, and then you turn, you, 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 you know, it, that's all it does. It just does it like you hand it to your clothes for washing, and it hands you back your clean clothes. All right? That's very similar to when I was talking about REST before. Um, microservices are often implemented using REST. Um, all that the micro part of it means is that we've broken it down into very, very small components and that we're coordinating very small tasks um, between systems. Um, Service-oriented architecture is generally now more meaning uh, business level functions, like, you know, I need to transcode a piece of media, whereas the microservices architecture might break that down into smaller pieces. Um, and that's really the only difference. There's a million different definitions, and that's why I made this the slide for this, because there's really a million different ways. And this is true of a lot of software stuff. For any of you who are into software design, there's a million ways. It's a lot of philosophy, a lot of philosophers in the, in the software industry <laughs> um, about the way that you do it. Um, and we pick a lot of different words, and words uh, that continually recycle. So I hope that uh, talking about some of the buzzwords today using a little more interactive formats it was helpful today. Got you through your through after lunch. No more meat comas. Um, and uh, you're ready for whoever the next speaker is. Thank you. Thank you.